How's it going? Welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to remove nail down hardwood from your flooring. So this is the tools that we're going to be using on this project. The only thing that's not here that is not mandatory, but I will be using in this video is a sander, a palm sander or a floor edger, whichever one that you have. The floor edger will work best, but if you don't have it, a palm sander or a belt sander will work for what we're going to be doing here. These again are what we're going to be using here. That way you can get everything together when you start your project. We're going to be using a skill saw, a little oscillating saw, a hammer, pry bar, flathead screwdriver, and a pair of channel locks. Okay, so what we want to do here whenever we are to get started here, obviously if you take this up in full planks, it's going to be pretty rough because your staple pattern is going to be every uh, three to eight inches, three to six inches, somewhere in there, if a person stapled it down properly. So every few inches is going to be a staple in the tongue of these boards, which is going to make it pretty hard. So what I will do, I will cut my cut across the rows this direction and uh, make it eight inches a foot somewhere in there between each cut. That way I'm just dealing with pieces of board about this big right here instead of dealing with the whole board. It makes it come up so much easier. And after I get this cut, you'll definitely see the difference. You'll see how easy it is to come up in pieces. So I'm gonna take my circular saw here and get it set to the depth of the wood. Um, what I wanna do is release my release the guide right there so it's freely to go up and down and you could measure it or you can look at the markings on it or whatever so I got my uh, guide freed up and I like to just lower my blade until it touches the floor as soon as it touches the floor I'm going to lock it down right there that way I got a nice precise depth where my blade is just going to go through it might barely score my subfloor but that's going to be okay so long as we're not going halfway through it or something we're going to be good we want to try not try our best to avoid digging into it but it's almost impossible without getting a little score mark on it now that we got our uh, depth set on our saw we're going to run run it crossways like so right across the planks instead of lengthways it wouldn't do a whole lot of good to go lengthways of the planks so we're, our goal is to go crossways of the planks shorten these planks down to about a foot eight inches something like that it's going to be a whole lot easier to get up i'm going to crank on the vacuum and get to cutting So we got it all cut. You can see now nah, some of them may be a little bit uh, further than 12 inches or whatever. The point is that you just run cuts across it. This wood with it being so wide is not going to be too awful bad to come up anyways. Whenever you get into some uh, more narrow boards and thicker boards, this is going to be pretty simple because it is a uh, seven inch planks by uh, three eighths of an inch thick. So if you're going with some three quarter inch true hardwood that are couple inches wide three inches wide or something like that or even a half inch that's four or five inches wide four three and a half inches wide or something the smaller the boards are and thicker the boards are the harder it's going to be so you're going to want to scoot them cuts a little closer together versus having them spaced out such as i did here so i'm going to go ahead and tidy up this little bit of sawdust we got here and then we'll be ready to tear it up Okay, with that being said, we're going to go ahead and use our pry bar and hammer. We're just going to start knocking this stuff up. Because they are cut in small pieces, they're going to come up extremely easy, okay? Watch this. Those two actually came up as one. That's two boards, but you can see it came up as one piece since they are cut
Same thing there. Giving myself just a wiggle up because it's fastened down to the floor through the tongue again. So I'm actually coming in the back of the wood from the groove that is loose and not going straight up underneath the tongue. So it comes up pretty easy like that if you'll work from the groove versus coming in at the tongue where it's actually secured. You get your pry bar under it, lift right up and break that tongue. And it's, it, there it is, boom, just as easy as anything. And I want you to take a look here at the staples. So I want you to notice how close these are stapled. Here, that's about three and a half inches, maybe three inches, three inches, two inches, three inches, three inches, three, two. So this is typically what you're going to be looking at as you're tearing up your floor. The staples should be about that far apart. So that's why it's, it's a lot easier if you can cut it in pieces first. Okay, there we got it. We got about a 45 square foot of flooring took up there, approximately about an eight by five, eight by six, something like that, in just a matter of a few minutes. So the tearing up part don't take long. Now we got all these staples on the floor right here we have to deal with. I'm gonna show you how to take care of them as soon as I get this mess cleaned up. Okay, so we got everything tore up and cleaned up and stuff like that. Now I'm gonna go ahead and address these staples. Um, what you can do if you don't have a lot of tools you can take a pair of channel locks and i suggest these over pliers if you decide to go this route because it has that round head on it right there so you're able to grab your staples and just roll it see see that it'll just roll right over however this is not the best method for doing that but if you if you're shy on tools and you have no other choice, this will work. I mean, it is, you can do it halfway fast, but it's really rough on your hands. So I would suggest uh, not doing this, but again, I'll just pull up a few right here and let you see how fast that it will go. I mean, it's not too awful bad, it's just kind of rough. So you can see that they come right out. But the main thing you don't want to do you don't want to beat these down and leave them in your floor, okay? You always want to either remove them or at least get them knocked down flush, okay? With that being said, if you go beating these staples down, uh, I'll just show you right fast. If you beat these down, you can actually rub, your, rub something over and still catch it because it's hard to get that huge piece of staple beat down all the way in the floor, okay? Let me just show you that real fast. So I'm just going to beat this down and we're going to see how it does. So filling it, eh, you actually can still fill it a little bit. And what happens is this, uh, with a staple laying flat on the floor, just like so, it's hard to beat that enough to where it will just sink into the wood and not be noticeable, okay? So see that? Still, still sticking up, no matter how much you beat on it, okay? So definitely want to get these out. Okay, so what I like to do, I will take my little oscillating saw and I'm just gonna cut these staples off flush with the floor, okay? That way it's a lot easier on your hand and it's definitely, uh, I guess it's probably not a whole lot faster, but it's probably a little faster, but it's a whole lot easier, less painful on your hand. So I've got a um, carbon tipped uh, Dremel uh, blade in here and they will hold up to these staples. They'll actually buzz right through them pretty good. So. I, I got these specifically for doing this right here, okay? I'm gonna show you just how fast and efficient this is to just buzz them right off flush with the floor with this. See that? There's one buzzed right off already and it is flush. Watch this, right there, right here it is. See that? No issue with it sticking up or whatsoever, okay? I 
come in these one leg at a time too, rather than turning it and going both legs at once. Okay, so again, we got them all cut up, all the woods up, staples are cut off flush with the floor. I'm going to clean this up, and there's one more thing that I want to do, and then this subfloor is going to be good for whatever type of flooring that we want to install next. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my edger. This is a floor sander that has a 7-inch sanding disc on the bottom of it. If you don't have one, you can by all means, like I said earlier, use a belt sander, use a little palm sander or anything. You just want to get something with a little bit rougher grit on it, maybe a, a 40 grit or something like that for your palm sander, maybe even a little uh, rougher. Uh, I think this right here has like a 30 grit or... Yeah. I think I got about a 30 grit right here on this, so... Uh, it's going to eat it up pretty fast. I'm going to keep it moving pretty fast so I don't cut a groove in my subfloor from letting this sander set in one spot so long. But this is only going to take me, again, about maybe two minutes tops, and the floor is going to be completely sanded, smooth, and clean and ready for our next installation. So this is the method that I use right here to remove hardwood and get the floor prepped, staples and everything off the floor ready to go for your next installation. Once again, I will leave a link in the description to all the tools that I use in this video. Uh, thank you guys for tuning in. Until next time, FBSB's out.